good day. Welcome to the Far Eastern University Public Intellectual Lecture Series. My name is Rita Cusho, and I am from the Political Science Department. Our topic for today is entitled Sculpting Integrity, Addressing Ethical Issues in Business. And we are privileged to have with us a certified public accountant and lawyer, the chairperson and senior partner of PWC Philippines, and the chair of the Integrity Initiative, a nonprofit organization that promotes common ethical and acceptable integrity standards in the business sector. He's none other than attorney Alexander Cabrera. Good day, sir. And uh, good afternoon to you, uh, Rita. And yes, good afternoon sir. to all the FEU students uh, who are watching this program. Thank you very much, sir, for accommodating our request for you to participate in our public intellectual lecture series. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. And our topic for today will first start with your involvement with Integrity Initiative. Can you please, sir, uh, um, share with us why you you started this uh, nonprofit organization? Well, actually, the Integrity Initiative was started by the uh, Makati Business Club um, Management Association of the Philippines, um, the American Chambers of uh, Commerce, and the European uh, Chamber of the Philippines. So these are the um, big organizations that uh, started Integrity Initiative, um, and it is there for a purpose. It is actually to make um, the Philippines, our country, uh, competitive mm -hmm. in the global arena uh, to play like a world-class country mm -hmm. to have a level playing field mm -hmm. and of course to uh, improve ethics in business mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so um, when when was this started this project by the MBC well the integrity initiative started as early as about four years ago uh -huh. um, but it's it's trying to get the right traction mm -hmm. um, this year. Mm -hmm. uh, and by right traction is mm -hmm. that we're trying to um, refocus on an area which I think uh, and which I think and the board believes mm -hmm. is important in pushing integrity forward. Mm -hmm. And that uh, sector is actually the youth. Mm, mm -hmm. All right, so it's the youth sector that you're actually targeting. So what are some of the projects or initiatives that you have done so far in the last uh, four years? Okay. So, well, during the last four years, uh, I think the main thing is getting the commitment from the private sector mm -hmm. um, to sign the Integrity, in integrity Pledge mm -hmm. um, and um, to commit to ethical practices mm -hmm. in their business. Mm -hmm. um, there were a lot of... Uh, things uh, done with the local government mm -hmm. uh, to get them into the integrity uh, mm -hmm. the integrity circle mm -hmm. um, and a lot of um, advocacies mm -hmm. and getting the government agencies on board mm -hmm. on uh, on these integrity initiatives mm -hmm. you know but um, the awareness is there but we need to uh, push forward mm -hmm. um, gain more traction mm -hmm. and deliver I think more substantive uh, um, results, if, mm -hmm. you, if you'd like to, to say, mm -hmm. uh, to call it that, mm -hmm. um, in terms of more people really embracing this mm -hmm. and embracing integrity even at a cost. Mm -hmm. Because that's that's the thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. you, you can easily sign up mm -hmm. uh, for integrity and sign up uh, for the integrity pledge, mm -hmm. you know, but if you're not prepared to incur the cost of mm -hmm. integrity, uh, then it will be a meaningless commitment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think um, the reason why the group of uh, people mm -hmm. are still here mm -hmm. to support the Integrity Initiative, mm -hmm. why big corporations support it, mm -hmm. is that they're prepared to incur a cost. Mm -hmm. Because I in, that, uh, in that principle, mm -hmm. in the principle of level playing field, mm -hmm. um, and in the principle of having transparency and above mm -hmm. board uh, dealings mm -hmm. uh, with government, with mm -hmm. private uh, institutions, mm -hmm. that is really where also the sustainability mm -hmm. of business lies. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if you care about the future, mm -hmm. uh, then you should be able to turn over your business, for instance, mm -hmm. to the next generation of leaders, mm -hmm. where there can be pride. And when you turn over that business, mm -hmm. 
it's a uh, it's a business with integrity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, sir, that that's a very noble uh, objective for you to have because I believe that um, you also see that there is a very significant relationship between how we fare in the international standards on global comp competitiveness on one end, and then the integrity of how we do our business uh, in the Philippines. How are we faring so far in that global competitiveness index, sir? Uh, well, in, in so far as the integrity um, mm -hmm. aspect is concerned, mm -hmm. we, we we didn't rank uh, very high. Mm -hmm. I think we're about 169, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, in the uh, world ranking. So that's mm -hmm. that's not a very high ranking mm -hmm. um, um, rating mm -hmm. for a country that is considered probably the, the second uh, fastest growing country mm -hmm. in the uh, Southeast uh, Asian region. Mm -hmm. Um, so we can we can actually do uh, mm -hmm. so much better. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if um, in that is not an issue, perception is not an issue, mm -hmm. how many more um, companies, international mm -hmm. companies and foreign investments will mm -hmm. will come um, and do business here, mm -hmm. and that will of course produce so much um, opportunities mm -hmm. for employment, uh, so much opportunities for new infrastructure, new services. Mm -hmm better life and maybe push us faster to a world uh, class mm -hmm. uh, country level. Mm -hmm. So sir, if our rank is, uh, as you have said, it's 169, that's quite low, right? So what do you think are the reasons why the Philippines is not faring well in the in that competitiveness index? Um, well, I think it's, it's a lot of combination of a number of factors, mm -hmm. not the least of which, uh, for instance, is the <coughs> ease of doing business. Mm -hmm. Um, in the Philippines mm -hmm. um, and <coughs> oh, sorry mm -hmm. um, I think the the thing about this ranking mm -hmm. and the thing about this comments about us mm -hmm. outside the Philippines oh, they are feedback uh -huh. and I think this feedback uh, mechanism mm -hmm. or informal feedback mechanism mm -hmm. including the formal ones like the mm -hmm. rankings of the World Bank mm -hmm. they help us to get better okay. and the business community has ad uh, they have um, advocated for ease of doing business, mm -hmm. different organizations, and now we have a an ease of doing business law, mm -hmm. right? And uh, hopefully that mm -hmm. uh, that law will gain traction. Mm -hmm. The revenue regulations mm -hmm. has just been issued, mm -hmm. so we'll see whether it becomes easier to get your permits in the mm -hmm. local government, okay. where everyone will be entertained based on the merits mm -hmm. and uh, not on um, not on facilitation, the ability to facilitate. <laughs> Um, we, we'll see. It's a, it's a promising law, mm -hmm. but we need to see the reaction mm -hmm. uh, from the government side, mm -hmm. because any any good law can be laid mm -hmm. to waste, mm -hmm. you know, if government doesn't implement it. Yes. But if there's political will to implement laws, mm -hmm. and I mean, true political will to mm -hmm. implement laws, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, even if we didn't have mm -hmm. the ease of doing business law, and you pass regulations. Mm -hmm. Uh, the right regulations to improve doing business, mm -hmm. then it would have been done. Mm -hmm. But we needed legislation mm -hmm. to clear up the penalties. Mm -hmm. And the penalties, for instance, for a local, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, for a, for any government official, mm -hmm. I mean, two strikes are out. Mm -hmm. If uh, first complaint, okay, you'll be warned. Second second mm -hmm. complaint about you, if if that complaint is validated, mm -hmm. uh, you're out. Mm -hmm. So that that is the potential power behind mm -hmm. the ease of doing business mm -hmm. and um, while we're talking about ease mm -hmm. uh, we cannot help but also talk about the level level playing field yes. because if doing business is not easy mm -hmm. uh, or deliberately not made easy mm -hmm. then the the players the mm -hmm. corporates will find a way mm -hmm. to get their transactions done mm -hmm. so that they will not be hostage in that situation mm -hmm. They have stakeholders they report to, there are customers, there mm -hmm. are clients, mm -hmm. there are expectations around, and they mm -hmm. can't get a transaction because of a permit, mm -hmm. they're going to do something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that is probably uh, mm -hmm. the common start of all evils. Mm -hmm. So that, that makes a lot of sense as to why, let's say, the, the new mayor of Manila would like to put up some sort of a one-stop shop, uh, if you've heard about that, sir, so that uh, it's easier for a business, for the entrepreneurs to, to start their own businesses, right? Because when they want to secure the signatures of the, let's say, the officials, then they just have to go to that one-stop shop and then 
the the processing of their papers will be expedited. It, it's a it's a good advocacy, mm-hmm. but and uh, actually the mayor Panila is a mm-hmm. is a is a different uh, human being, uh-huh. um, as we have observed. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's a good initiative. Mm-hmm. The reality is, it's mm-hmm. not only the local government. Mm-hmm. You need the other government agencies like mm-hmm. the Bureau of Internal Revenue and the I SEC. Mm-hmm. And if you're uh, applying for incentives, the, the mm-hmm. BOI. Mm-hmm. If you needed a franchise, the LTFRB. Mm-hmm. So th- if you, uh, mm-hmm. the, um, um, uh, the Food and Drugs mm-hmm. Administration, mm-hmm. Um, I- if you're into food or into mm-hmm. uh, pharmaceuticals. So there's a number of other agencies mm. that can make your life difficult. Mm-hmm. So it's not only the local government mm-hmm. which is concerned about the initial permit, about yeah. the mayor's permit mm-hmm. or the annual uh, local business mm-hmm. licenses. Mm-hmm. There's this bunch of other national agencies uh-huh. that can get involved. And and this needs to be taken care of. I see. Um, mm-hmm. The day-to-day operations mm-hmm. involving these other mm-hmm. government agencies mm-hmm. I think should be addressed uh, and not only the start of doing business. Mm. Okay. So, sir, you have been in the business sector for quite some time now. and I Ever think since I was a little boy. Really? Okay. Uh, when I was a little. Then. I see. All right. I'm happy I'm now a little man. <laughs> okay. So, sir, um, so th- the fact that uh, Integrity Initiative wanted to uh, institutionalize the ease of doing business, you know, and leveling the playing field. That means that prior to the coming up or the, dra- the drafting of this law, there has been a very, very difficult experience for many entrepreneurs to put up businesses. Have you and en- have you have had cases of, you know, uh, businessmen or entrepreneurs in general uh, dealing with corrupt practices in the government that somehow uh, place that in that lower ranking in that global competitiveness index? Yeah, and th- there are a number of uh, examples, mm-hmm. and I can I can state a few. Mm-hmm. There are these uh, local governments who say that what you pay this year mm-hmm. should be twenty percent than what you pay a uh, higher twenty percent mm-hmm. higher than what you paid uh, mm-hmm. last year. Mm-hmm. Now that absolutely has no legal basis mm-hmm. because what you pay is a function of your gross sales, yes. and if you declare all your gross sales mm-hmm. or your gross receipts if you're in services, mm-hmm. um, then you are paying the right taxes if you make the right declaration. Mm-hmm. So there's absolutely mm. <laughs> no basis to require mm-hmm. a 20% higher, higher payment than mm-hmm. last year. Mm-hmm. That's just absolute mm-hmm. nonsense, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, to, to say the least. Yes. And yet, because you have the power, mm-hmm. and you can make life difficult for mm-hmm. those applying uh, mm-hmm. mayor's permit. And, 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 I, and I really don't, don't get it. Mm-hmm. Why will you make life difficult for those mm-hmm. trying to do business in your locality? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You should be helping them. Mm-hmm. Because helping them helps the public. Mm-hmm. Okay. So these are uh, examples of corrupt practices that happen in the government. But I'm just curious because I've never been part of the business sector. What, uh, what about those ethical issues that you experience within the, the business sector? You know, the, well, I, I would say that the, um, the root of all evil mm-hmm. um, for the business sector, mm-hmm. for anyone starting up, mm-hmm. is the issue of survival. It's, it's a very important issue and, mm-hmm. and all our students uh, listening today mm-hmm. need to re-examine um, what are they prepared to do mm-hmm. uh, in the real world. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm not saying in school you're taught ethics, yes. but in the real world you need to drop that because this is the real world mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you need to survive. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, that is not my point at all. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is, are you prepared to okay do some sacrifice? Yes, mm-hmm. but then are you also prepared to do the right kind of uh, uh, self uh, empowerment, mm-hmm. such as learning the laws, mm-hmm. learning your obligations, mm-hmm. learning the right way to minimize your cost, mm-hmm. learning the right way to structure your business mm-hmm. so that you're able to minimize cost mm-hmm. legally, mm-hmm. and then if you minimize all your cost, including tax cost, mm-hmm. to the extent that you're allowed by law, mm-hmm. can you live with it? Mm-hmm. And if you have a little bit of profit after that, mm-hmm. can you live with that kind mm-hmm. of business model mm-hmm. and try to push forward based on that? Mm-hmm. You know, because you know, I'm, I'm not going to be mm-hmm. um, naive here. Mm-hmm. You know. Survival is a very important thing. Mm-hmm. But the issue about that concept of justifying 
bribery for instance mm-hmm. if we can use that word mm-hmm. or engaging in corrupt uh, uh, business practices mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the issue with that when you relate that to survival mm-hmm. is that you really wouldn't know when you've crossed the line I see. between okay. survival and need mm-hmm. versus accumulation and greed mm-hmm. and wh- when does survival end and when does greed start mm-hmm. it's a very difficult line because mm-hmm. it always goes for we say I'm trying to grow my business. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to expand my business, mm-hmm. but but you know, Rita and and mm-hmm. and, and the students, you know, mm-hmm. growth not for the sake of growth. Mm-hmm. You must have good growth, mm-hmm. and by good growth, I mean the other stakeholders mm-hmm. must be uh, placed in the equation, mm-hmm. and that's not only your employees. Mm-hmm. That's not only your shareholders. Mm-hmm. That's the environment. Mm-hmm. That's the government. Mm-hmm. That's the community where you operate. Mm-hmm. That's our country that's going to leverage from your payment of taxes. Mm-hmm. And when you consider all those, mm-hmm. only then can you have good growth. Mm-hmm. And good growth is the sustainable growth mm-hmm. uh, that I will call. Mm-hmm. And growth not only based on financial statements. And mm-hmm. If we're talking to accounting students here or business mm-hmm. students here, the growth that you will be taught is financial statement growth, mm-hmm. PNL. Mm-hmm. That's not the only growth mm-hmm. that will help you become sustainable. Mm-hmm. The financial statements is very short term, mm-hmm. and you're good today. You're good this year. You might not be good next year. Mm-hmm. What you should be worried about is sustainability. Yes. And if you are going to be sustainable in today's world, mm-hmm. you better consider all your stakeholders Mm -hmm. when you consider your stakeholders including the country the community the government Mm -hmm. then you're going to have to have Mm -hmm. ethical practices okay very beautiful explanation sir and very passionate one at that Mm -hmm. so that brings me to my next question about the csr i've been hearing a lot about the corporate social responsibility of many um, business organizations Uh, can you please elaborate on that and and state why it's beneficial to the other stakeholders in the business sector? Uh, well, I think the CSR mm-hmm. of organizations, mm-hmm. I'm not going to um, mix words. They, they also take their cue from the leaders, right? Mm-hmm. Because if the owners don't mm-hmm. like CSR, it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. So, I'm, for instance, I have a, f- unfortunately, he's, he's my friend. Mm-hmm. He's an American. Mm-hmm. He has a company here in the mm-hmm. Philippines. Mm-hmm. He's a successful BPO. Mm-hmm. And then the uh, the employees, the staff said, mm-hmm. um, "Sir, this Christmas mm-hmm. uh, we propose we propose or rather, how did they say it? Sir, this Christmas we decided not to have our party mm-hmm. uh, because we're going to donate mm-hmm. uh, the cost for our party to these uh, victims in uh, Typhoon Haiyan, mm-hmm. um, Typhoon Yolanda, yes. mm-hmm. and and the." Um, this American uh, owner said, mm-hmm. it's my money. Mm-hmm. I decide what to do with it. Oh. And I want a Christmas party. Oh, okay. So mm-hmm. I think there's there's a lot of cue mm-hmm. that, that will need to come from the uh, mm-hmm. owner or, or the CEO. Mm-hmm. And then when that cue, when that uh, signal is opened, mm-hmm. then the individual advocacies of the employees mm-hmm. um, come come forward mm-hmm. and then they they put in their own time mm-hmm. and then they begin helping mm-hmm. csr is about purpose yes and obviously the obvious definition of mm-hmm. csr is not mm-hmm. is that business is not only about making money yes mm-hmm. it's also about taking care of mm-hmm. the peers mm-hmm. the community the mm-hmm. environment mm-hmm. all those things that will sustain us mm-hmm. and sustain the earth Mm-hmm. For instance, and that is about CSR is about sustainability. Okay. So it, it's not only about, it is largely about caring for people, mm-hmm. but it's not only about caring for people mm-hmm. like giving them fish. Mm-hmm. You know, the, because the, um, the most important CSRs mm-hmm. are those that give nets, mm-hmm. uh, those that help communities find their own um, um, source of living. Mm-hmm those that help industries, mm-hmm. um, those that provide for environmental solutions. Yes. These are nets, mm-hmm. and these are not just food on the table, mm-hmm. or sopas, or um, aruscaldo, yes. na may mga nakapilang mamimigay ka ng yes. aruscaldo. CSR mm-hmm. is more than that. Mm-hmm. 
So, sir, um, one of the things that I learned in one of the interviews that we have conducted on manage or uh, combating corruption in a specific sector is what was called the uh, sandwich approach, wherein you have movement on the ground, and then, of course, you have movement trying to influence the leaders on the top, right? And I would like to know if Integrity Initiative or the Maka Makati Business Club has something similar to that, wherein while you want to make your people down on the ground, uh, accountable for their actions as part of the business sector, you also do the same with the leaders because as you said, like for example, CSR is largely dependent on the cues being provided by the owners. So are there initiatives similar to this well, sandwich actually, approach? The, the Integrity Initiative wants to start at the top. I see. Okay. And if you look at that uh, PWC um, uh, mm -hmm. survey, mm -hmm. um, if you look at that PWC survey, mm -hmm. Uh, on corruption among private institutions, mm -hmm. uh, uh, financial crimes, mm -hmm. they are committed by yeah. the leaders. Mm -hmm. Yes. They're committed by upper management, they're committed by middle management. Mm -hmm. And I would even say that some of it has board approval. You mm -hmm. know why? Because when someone decides mm -hmm. not to pay tax, mm -hmm. it's not your money, right? Yes. So, if I'm the owner, if I'm the board and mm -hmm. I tell you, let's pay all our taxes, mm -hmm. why will you complain? Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. my money. I'm going to be compliant. Mm -hmm. So, when you do something to mm -hmm. lower your taxes, mm -hmm. as an example, mm -hmm. um, to save cost, mm -hmm. and the board of directors, they don't give mm -hmm. express approval, mm -hmm. but they turn a blind eye. Mm -hmm. Tacit approval. Uh -huh. You know, that is a decision taken by the board. Mm -hmm. In other words, maybe the financial crimes about stealing of assets of the company and mm. uh, uh, crimes that you commit uh, mm -hmm. using the um, technology, mm -hmm. etc. These are crimes where you need partners outside mm -hmm. and there's an insider with a partner outside uh -huh. and you can commit financial crimes about mm -hmm. the company. Mm -hmm. But you know, the unique thing about corruption, mm -hmm. so far as I'm concerned, mm -hmm. um, is that they need board approval. Oh. And if the board does not approve of it, mm -hmm. then it can be cut immediately, right? Mm -hmm. And then the perpetrators can be mm -hmm. um, showed the door. Mm -hmm. uh, you can even file a case against them. Mm -hmm. But if the board approves, mm -hmm. then nothing will happen. Mm -hmm. That's the uniqueness about bribery and, and, and corruption. Mm -hmm. I, I think they need board approval.